Our final representative comes from Ghana. Come on up to the stage, sir. Let me introduce you to Mr. Charles Ofori from Dext Technologies. Here is his pitch about to start. Your three minutes starts now. Good afternoon. From the phones that we use to our cars and our roads, engineers and scientists weave the fabric of development. But Africa is behind. The UN says that for Africa to be able to have enough scientists and engineers, we need 45% of our students to go into science and engineering. Currently, only 12% does because there's simply no labs and material. This, this, this is the problem we try to find a solution for. And we ask a really daring question, that is it possible to put a science lab on the desk of student? And the answer to this question was yes. We created the science set. The science set contains over 45 individual components and materials for a wide variety of activities. All of this is small enough to fit on a desk of a student and is as affordable as a textbook. Currently, more than 11,000 students in 200 classrooms across Africa have already performed more than 20,000 activities using the science set. How do we make money? We sell the science set at a 40% profit margin to parents, government, organizations, institutions. We are not the only ones doing something like the science set. However, we are unique because we are portable, affordable, and adaptable enough to be integrated into almost any classroom on the continent. The team behind the science set is really solid. Myself, my co-founder, as well as eight other energetic young people, including our board of directors, such as the lady who is the Director of Science, Technology, and Innovation at Ghana's Ministry of Science and Technology. We continue to develop the science set further. This is a microscope that could cost as little as $2. Mm -hmm. that we are about into the science set. The BBC recently in an article on the science set said it could be the tool that will bring about the next generation of African innovators. My dad, was a science teacher for over 20 years. And in that time, the only thing he had was a bottle that he used to measure rainfall. And today, students in even the remote parts of Ghana and South Africa are building their first digital logic gates using the science set. And I'm telling you that a day is coming that every student, whether they're in a farming community in the Gambia or here in Lusaka, Zambia, will have a science set on their desks the world better prepare for Africa and its new of tomorrow. Thank you. So in short, you're trying to grow the next generation of Elon Musk, aren't you? Yes, we are. Very much so. All right, so let's see what the judges think. Uh, starting okay. from that. Another great presentation. <laughs> Not because I'm from Ghana, it was actually <laughs> a good presentation. Um, what are the age ranges for the kids you have? So currently, the science set can be used by students all the way from 10 years old up to about 18 and above, but we require adult supervision for um, students that are below the age of 13. So um, I'm sure there's a cost to the kit. Yes. What happens to remote places in Ghana where they can't really afford the kit? I like, honestly can't afford So it. a science set costs $10, the entire pack. Now, even for communities that even this is expensive for, we've realized that what they do is, instead of buying one science set per child, about five students get a science set, which they can use, group around it, and then perform activities with it. So in essence, you are saying you're not giving it out for free ever? We do have instances where organizations purchase the science sets, we brand them, and then we donate it to um, students who can just not afford it. Okay. I'm dying to ask this question. <laughs> Can I see your science test? Sir? Absolutely. So show me what's in <laughs> So go on, explain what's in the science set. So inside the science set, you have over 45 individual components. So you have um, 
the power supply, then you have your battery holders. Those battery holders are 3D printed. Um, you have components to perform activities under light. So you have the light stand, the beam splitter, the rainmaker. You have the mirror to perform reflection of lights. Um, you also have electronic components. So the resistors, the transistors, the capacitors, the diodes, all of them are in here. And the connecting wires to connect all of these components to perform several activities. Wow. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, that looks uh, really quite interesting. But if I would get one of those, I wouldn't know where to start. <laughs> um, does it come with instructions? Yes. So the science that currently comes a very comprehensive user manual, and we also have YouTube video tutorials on every single activity that you can do with a science set that you can have access to for free. Um, and just a follow-up question. You mentioned there have already been a couple of hundred of students that have experimented with the science kit. Yeah. Um, what's the feedback so far? Because this seems to be an initial you know, instrument to really get Students are, are, are children excited about science, and are they pursuing careers? Are they pursuing this further? Yeah. Thank you very much for asking that question. I was hoping someone would ask that question. So, currently, the students who are using the science set, we've seen amazing results. So, one of the key things that we are going to use to measure the impact of the science set in the short term is something that we call the design challenge. Now, the design challenge is after we give a number of students access to the science set, they go through it. We pick a problem in the society and we throw it up to them. A problem that usually requires them to use the knowledge they've gotten from the science set to come up with a solution. And then we see what kind of solution these students can come up with. In such an instance, you know, in Ghana, sometimes we have a lot of light cuts. So we told the students, you're about to do your homework and the lights go off. You've used the science set, you've learned about circuits, you know about lights. Can you create something that can help you do your homework when the lights go off? We were amazed when one student took recycled cardboard, made a square out of it, and in the middle of that, she had the wires and then the batteries, and on each side of the box, she put a light bulb so that her friends can come to her house, sit around the box, and they can collaborate on their homework. So imagine every single student on the continent having a similar. Over the long term, too, we want to be able to measure the number of students who are actually choosing to do science at the higher education level. We said it just about a year and a half ago, so in, in the not too distant future, we are going to be collecting this data and then being able to analyze to see where things are going. All right. Awesome. Okay. Uh, thank you. I would like to know, where do you get all the components of the scientists? So currently, we import most of the raw materials, but the entire process happens in Ghana. So we are sourced to local manufacturers who do some of the parts, but we do, we have a laser cutter, a, some 3D printers that we use to manufacture the plastic parts. We have young people that we've trained who do the soldering of the components, the packaging and everything. Okay, and when do you plan to go in other countries? So currently the site is in Ghana, it's in South Africa, it's in Nigeria, and interestingly enough, it turns out that the underfunded schools in the US, in Tucson, Arizona, that ordered 200 science sets. Wow. <laughs> All right. Very well done, sir. Charles Apori from Ghana. Thank Ladies you very much.